Welcome, friends, to Saga Thursday, your regular source for Saga, the miniatures game goodness. I am Raj, aka the Wisco Horn Dog, your guide on this Saga journey. And today we got a fun episode planned. We are beginning our review of the Norse Gales Battle Board, and this is from the Raven's Shadow Supplement along with the infamous Irish war band. These guys are a, a lot of fun. We are bringing back John Stentz, the Silver Fox, to help me go through these guys and pick them apart and put them back together. And uh, let's get into that right now. And we are back again with Mr. John Stentz, the Silver Fox. How's it going, dude? Going well, Joe. Good to see you. How you been? Oh, I've been great. Liking, uh, liking this new backdrop here with the uh, miniatures displayed. Thanks, thanks. I, uh, you know, taking a page out of your playbook. Yeah, the Book of Raj has many, uh, many a secret within it that many others can use. So glad to spread that word. <laughs> uh, we're gonna chat Norse scales today. Is that right? That is right. Sounds good. Excellent. So you are pretty badass with these dudes. You played them this year and won it all at the Grand Melee, uh, which we chatted about last yeah. time. You played them last year too, correct? I did. For, for the Grand Melee? Yeah, and I remember because you were featured then, you have this really distinctive display board that people might have seen. Was it like War Games Illustrated? That War Games Illustrated, uh, January 2017. <laughs> nice. Is that displayed on your... Do you have a plaque for that on your wall if we turn the webcam around? Can we... <laughs> no, no, I don't. Maybe a future project, but that one didn't okay. make it too high in the queue. But uh, I, I actually... I get a digital. I get the War Games Illustrated digitally. And I'm like, so I saw it. I'm like, oh, this is really cool because I, I thought it was coming, but didn't know when. And I ended up having to buy the uh, hard copy from the guys over in the UK. And it gave me a good excuse to buy some models from them too. So that was all good. Oh, wow, excellent, good deal. How did that come about? So they took, you have this really big display board, which I'm pretty sure I have photos of it and the Adepticon thing, but it's the, yeah. it's, it's pretty big. It's like two feet by two feet maybe. And um, it's, um, it's, I think it's bigger than that. It's, it's probably two <laughs> feet deep. And it's about three feet wide, approximately. Yeah, it's bad. It's a big uh, scenic. I think there's like a little ford in there. Yeah. And you got a spot for every single warrior and hearth guard. He's got yeah. his own little spot carved out. Yeah. And I, I like it because normally I don't like when the display boards have little spaces for the models to sit in. But yours is pretty seamless, the way you did the rocks and everything. And nice. just like with the scrub and you know all the foliage and stuff it really hit it really well so you Thanks. couldn't really notice it just looked like a big display piece and they're slaughtering some monks yeah on that on that board so average day at the north scale office yeah baby how did so how did war games illustrated contact were they at adepticon they were dave taylor was representing them there he was doing photographs of the cool stuff he saw and uh, he happened to be coming through the Saga Hall and saw it and asked me if I could, he could take photos of it. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. This is um, a personal project. I, I'm just, yeah. I'm going to keep it, keep it under wraps. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, it was cool. Like the drop-ins, I, I, I would agree with you, Raj, that normally I don't love the drop-ins. I've done some of that before. I did some of that back in the days of Warhammer fantasy with display boards and drop-ins, but I knew it really limited like the the flexibility of the army build. Mm -hmm. However, with Norscale, I I love this particular build, build I use. So I just said it's not going to matter. I'm, I, this is the build I'm going to play when I play Norscale. So it's it's no big thing. And the Grand Melee is such a big show that I just wanted to do something that hadn't been done and, and I wanted to do the drop-ins and then and the challenge of making like all the rocky terrain and having rocks partly on the guy's bases and partly on the display board and cutting them so that they fit together so closely that it would it would sort of you wouldn't even notice that was that was the goal yeah well definitely mission accomplished and yeah, I think probably Saga is a game too where it 
you, you don't really need to change your lists that much at all to really play the game. It's not as important as other game systems where you're always yeah. swapping units in and out. You know, there's just not that many units to begin with. But um, yeah, it makes sense. It's a cool, cool project. Definitely inspiring. Nice. And yeah. Um, yeah. Shout out to the guys at Kraken Skulls for helping me do all the laser cutting for me. And uh, the other thing that was fun about it was I, I did bigger bases. They're 30 millimeter rounds and I felt like I needed a little more space on the bases to really pull off the scenics. Mm, so that's a good point. It, it created an, an interesting challenge gameplay wise because when you're used to 25s and you're like, all of a sudden you're like, <clears throat> wait a minute, I can't get all these guys into combat if I'm sloppy about how I, how I move them around. So it tightened up my gameplay a little bit too. Oh yeah, that is interesting. Where yeah, if you got some dudes hanging out, um, you can really catch somebody out uh, more so. Yeah, that's short, that's, it's not that much. It's not that much. 30 mil, like, that's probably like an inch and a half. Is that right? Or an inch, yeah, inch and a quarter? You know, five millimeters doesn't sound like a lot, but when you stack it across, it can, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. stack it across ranks, well, instead of the third rank being in, now it's out for, yeah, very short. Yeah, that's true that third rank is always usually in. It but, usually is. Okay, interesting tale. Well, let's, get to the uh, warband composition for these guys. It looks pretty short and sweet. The warlords, hearth guards, and even just the warriors, which is pretty cool, can be equipped with Dane axes. And then they don't have to be, but the uh, warriors that aren't equipped with Dane axes are equipped with javelins, and they have their armor reduced by one against shooting. So kind of like a Welsh thing going on. And then the levies, just got the jabs, um, and that is about it. Now, there is a big thing about challenges up here. So I'm gonna leave that to you to explain, because that seems like a key mechanic of the board. It is a key mechanic. It's, it's what the North Scale have unique to them, and it's what jives with their battle board, most of their abilities. So, in a nutshell, a challenge is a step zero combat. Uh, so there, we'll talk about some abilities that have various effects. And you start by saying, okay, step zero, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna issue a challenge. And so when you do that, uh, the challenge is resolved between two units in that melee. And then uh, you designate the, the North Scale player designates which of his units, the opposing player chooses one of their units, and then you have to issue, you have to pick a, a model to be a champion. They don't have to be in base to base. It's just two guys that are going to be the, the token fighters. Yeah, so every model in the unit, within the unit, is basically identical. So yeah. it's just, you know, you're just going to nominate a guy to step up yeah. just for yep. thematic purposes. Yep, yep, exactly. So then you resolve the challenge. Now, for resolution of the challenge, you have a couple different options on how you resolve it. So it can be resolved by actually doing it. So, so when I say doing it, what, it's basically a roll off. So you take, you get to roll the number of dice that your unit, the guy that's in your unit would generate typically. So a warrior one, hearthguard two. If it's the warlord, five dice. You take Ooh, those dice me like it. and you roll them. You versus your opponents, however many dice they have from their person, and whoever rolls highest wins the challenge. Just a straight world roll off. If there's a tie mm -hmm. on the high die, then both units take a fatigue and you do it again. So. <laughs> That's, and that could go on. Yeah, yeah you could keep doing it, right? Yeah, yeah, it could go on for a, a while. Just it, and the funny thing about that would be, because it's step zero. By the time you get to step one, if somebody yeah. fatigues out by accident, that that's a big you're thing. exhausted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, the defender, uh, the the non North Scale player, has the option to decline the challenge. So. You know, boo, oh, hiss. Okay, so you don't have to do pansy. it. Boo, yeah. hiss, yes. But <laughs> if the uh, if the if the wiser move is not to lose the guy, like 
some of these things will be stacked against you. Some of the North Scale abilities stack the challenge in their favor. Um, so if you think you're going to lose your guy anyways, and you're not feeling lucky with your die roll, mm -hmm. you can decline the challenge. You won't lose the guy so that they're alive to fight the fight. But you'll still have the effect uh, of the challenge applied to you. Ah, uh, okay. So and it's it's some of these challenges are interesting because some of them, if they go poorly, can go poorly. They can hurt the North as well. Okay. Hurt the loser, whoever the loser is. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. You're stacking it in yeah. your favor as the North scale heavily, typically, and then there's yeah. just a blanket thing that says whoever wins this challenge is going to get this bonus. So there's like a small chance. Um, you know, it could go against you and you end up getting screwed. But so then if you win that, if they decline the challenge, you just automatically get whatever that benefit would be is kind of how yep. the format is of everything. Exactly. Now, in a case where you have a warlord being in a challenge, the warlord can use resilience rule to now they don't get resilience to bounce the hit, but if they have a warrior or a hearth guard model within very short of them they can put it onto them that model can die in their stead mm. that so, makes sense yeah so yeah i mean it's that can be a good situation to try to challenge out an enemy warlord and just put them out automatically if they're hanging out without any uh body buddies oh yeah just soup up some lowly schmuck with some abilities yeah. challenge him out yeah. <laughs> I've, I've souped up a hearth guard and and had him kill a, war, a warlord before with just some whatever challenge you know uh-huh they're, they're like oh i got this well that's badass too so then like saga abilities and stuff don't really play into it at all um you know like no. you wouldn't have the opportunity you know if i have defensive abilities or something that can i can't use those in the challenge no no you haven't yeah it's uh in the text it says the uh no hits are actually inflicted on the defeated champion simply killed beheaded <laughs> crushed dead yeah <laughs> so there you go yeah and i'm looking at the abilities here and these challenge ones are melee reaction abilities so they right. you know basically take place at step zero um so that's how you can use your abilities to help you and the other guy can't but yeah okay cool okay so uh let's go along that left hand side it's looking pretty typical here the uh bottom left however challenge pool mm -hmm. so um so do you have to use a saga dice to initiate a challenge or is this as make the challenge better add one die to the number of dice you have to roll during the challenge yes this this is the the way you add additional roles on your challenge in your challenge so this is in the place of every other board that has generally in this spot additional hits in melee mm -hmm. so they don't have that they've they've just got a way to make the challenges it's part of their whole mechanic just make the challenges better mm -hmm. that's how they roll baby yeah baby okay well let's start up at the top is that all right with you john i know you have a particular way <laughs> Of doing things these days. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, I'm not, not going to question it, but it makes perfect sense. Let's let's start here. This is this is the uh, this is the one plus ability. Okay. Oh, ooh, okay. Set up mm -hmm. here. How brave are you? Question mark. How brave mark. are you? Yeah. We got some more um, punctuation here. I always like that when we can get it on a board. You can use any one of the saga dice here. It's a orders ability. Until the start of your next turn, during any challenge, you benefit from a plus one bonus to your dice rolls, plus two if you discard a rare. So that that seems decent. Seems good. Yeah. I yeah. guess the more challenges you plan to do, the more bang for your buck you're going to get out of that. Yeah. Here's here's the other little maybe the most important part the plus one is awesome but this is where if you the north scale player you roll a six with a plus one yeah you just auto one because they can't roll a seven. Oh, really okay so that is clarified um you're up to a seven you're not yeah. capping at six yeah. so i'm liking that 
auto yeah, winning. So that's that's great. Like especially if you got if you have designs to use your warlord, five dice, pretty good odds you're gonna roll. Well, you just need to roll a five up because a five up is gonna at least be a tie, and a six is gonna be an auto win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then if you fight again or you continue the challenge, the plus one, you know, basically this is your entire turn, so you got plus yeah. one the next time as well. Yeah. So. Okay, that's interesting. How many um, challenges are you per turn? I mean, you can do one challenge per combat, so you're probably going to have yeah. a couple com. What's that? You can do multiple challenges per combat. Oh, is that an Unless ability, I or uh, or is that just the challenge thing? I didn't really. Oh, it's it's just. Um, I was. It just made me doubt it and double check it and just look. For a second. Okay, we we, um, we try for accuracy. We don't yeah, always yep. achieve it here. Well, it's because it's a step zero, and there, there's no limitation on how many step zero abilities you play. Mm. Unless, unless I'm totally incorrect, which I don't think I am. Um, no, I don't. You you know how the board works, so. <laughs> I, I, that that's in practice. That's what always happens. Is. Uh, you, you know, one or two challenges. I, it's it starts to get a little dice heavy to go more than that, but you you, you could, I suppose. Mm hmm. Okay. A little more challenges, the more bang for your buck out of this one. So. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you do dual? So this is dual. the first kind of challenge-related um, bonus ability, melee reaction. However you want to phrase it. Okay. Uh, so this one comes with either a common or an uncommon. And when you resolve that challenge, it says, if you win this challenge, so again, this applies to whomever wins, you may discard one fatigue from your unit or add one fatigue to the unit of the defeated champion. Okay, cool. So we're so, getting some of the flavor here of what you can do when you're yeah. winning these challenges. So typically, my process here is this is a great one if I'm double moving into a combat because it's a, just a way to get rid of that second fatigue I took on the second move. Oh, sure, yeah. Or if there isn't that, then just a great way to throw a fatigue on my opponent just to... Because when, when, if you are running a lot of Dane axes, the mm -hmm. lower your armor class on your opponent, hey, the better. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, that's a good point that uh, most of your guys will be having Dane axes here. So these are going to be some bloody battles on both sides for sure. Uh, yeah, they can. So this one looks like if you lose the challenge, there's no uh, negative effect on this one. Is that right? Well, the negative effect would be... Well, your dude dies. It takes a fatigue. Oh, okay. So... I'm just looking at the wording here. So the, it, if you win this challenge, that applies to both people? Yeah, whomever wins. Uh, okay. Yeah, j just by reading the, the wording there, uh, you might not think that, but um, yeah, I'm sure in the actual thing it clarifies. So, okay, cool. That one's looking pretty good. Yeah, that's a pretty, it's a pretty cheap one with a common. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a good way to get rid of a fatigue. No, not all warbands can do that. Right. And um, you know, if you're just adding fatigue as well, you've got some decent options here. So, And of course you have to go through the challenge to get it, but you're probably just killing a guy for free in addition to getting this ability. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, interesting. Okay, should we go down to show of strength? Does that Let's look do good? It. It's yeah. uh, Bayorka. We're looking at an uncommon melee reaction. It says resolve a challenge. If you win this challenge, the melee immediately ends and all opponent units must immediately disengage. Oh, cool. So they're like, back the fuck off, bro. <laughs> uh, cool. Yeah. When, would, when would you use this one? I use this one when I know that the the opposing uh i'll use the term death star you know the 12 that earth guard. really yeah that really really mean unit is coming in all loaded the bear and 
you know, they, they're going to see this sitting on your board, so they were, they might plan for it. They might not know where it's going to be. You know, it depends on wh- how many combats they're maybe planning on. Mm-hmm. But if you're like, yep, this is the time where 12 Hearth Guard are hitting me, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt bad. So you play it, and then make them choose if they're going to actually fight it out. If they lose a guy, all right, that's bad for them. But if they don't, they disengage. If they then want to use that unit to actually fight that fight, they got to activate again. They come in again. At least they're coming in with a fatigue. Okay. So, yeah, they're, for the original melee, it basically cancels it so they wouldn't get a fatigue for that melee. Right. Not for the melee. For, it's the second. It, it basically canceled it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's good to clarify. Um, okay, that's good. Yeah, it affects all opposing units. So, you know, if they're coming in with the Warlord and some warriors yeah. or something you can pop them both back kind of save that yep. in your back pocket just to prevent that if you wanted but yep. cool yeah so you could have a little piddly little roadblock unit you know those one or two or three man units which are typically you know, basically lose their utility pretty quickly and just hang out towards the back you can still kind of get those in in uh, up in their grill and not necessarily lose those either right so cool that one looks good yeah that's a good one that's i use that one a lot um do you want to go down to howling axes john all right talking about things i use a lot okay yeah it looks like no none of this challenge business just like no. a, an actual true true uh getting down to business uh killing ability it is it is so it's a common and an uncommon and it's a melee ability, and it says gain three attack dice. However, it also says five attack dice <laughs> if your unit armed with Dane axes. Uh, that's awesome. That's badass. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's bring some Dane axes. So, yeah, this one's badass because it has great utility. It uh, it it gets used all the time on the Warlord. Five to ten, boom! I gotta use them all. That guy is a killing machine. Quickly double it, yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the bang for your buck here is pretty phenomenal if you're rolling mm-hmm. with the day nice. The three attack dice is for an uncommon and a common on some boards. Like that's the best that they, you know, the best that you can do. I mean, you know, it's fairly yeah. average, but that that five, yeah, yeah, that's definitely uh, gonna sway your army composition a little bit. Uh, it, it does. I I typically bring. Um, a bunch of points of warriors and I'll take the warriors and divide them up into five packs just to make the best use of this. Wow, and, sure, yeah. <laughs> and I just, you know, to myself or when I'm talking about them, I just call them suicide squads. Their job is just to go out there and try to kill something more than they're worth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 10 attacks plus one to hit. Um, you can definitely yeah, give out a little better than what you're getting for sure. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, cool. that that's badass. Like in that one. That's good. Cool. Okay, moving down to un unbowed, unbowed. Mm-hmm. Some melee reaction. This is also using a common and an uncommon. A resolve a challenge. If you win the challenge, the unit of the victorious champion may reroll any failed attack or defense dice in the ensuing melee. Holy shit! Wow. Yeah. That's good. Anytime you get rerolls in Saga. It's good. You're not. You don't get it that often, but uh, attack or defense. Dice. So is it attack and defense dice, or I'm just going off the wording off the thing here. That's a great question. I am going to reference the book to see what it says. Yeah, I could see it kind of going either way. Um, it's, it's. I would sorry, say. Here's the clear. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, you want to make a guess? Um, it, it should be one or the other. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was both. <laughs> it's both. Okay. <laughs> it's both, yeah. So they say uh, the champion, the unit of the champion will be able to reroll once. That specifies only one Yeah, so you can't re-roll. re-roll multiple times. Right, right. Um, any attack dice that fail to hit the target. The same would apply with his unit's defense dice. And each one that fails to cancel hit is rerolled once. So, yes, it's both. Yeah, that that is good. I'm liking that one. 
Is, and that I'm is, thinking that's uh, um, something you're popping a return if you can. I, you know, so it's funny to me that I don't play this one as much as you would think. And I think it's because just the the desire to have Howling Axe and some of the other ones, like the rerolls are great. Mm -hmm. I think that you have to see the situation and go like, oh yeah, it doesn't seem to me to be as good on a five-man Suicide Squad as it mm. might be on a Hearthguard pack. So There's just more, you're like eight to ten, ten-man units, more typical. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a valid point. Um, you, you, there's going to be more bang for your buck on a bigger unit. So, hmm, interesting. Uh, that was a good one. Yeah, sure. it definitely is. You want to head on up? Should we go to the top? Is that looking Let's good? Go to the top. Okay. Uh, this one's called Like Stones. It's orders or orders reaction. Mm -hmm. uh, it requires two uncommon dice. Mm, another, and it's, another double. Yeah. And here it specifies, until the end of the turn, the fatigues on your units may not be removed or spent. Oh, wow. Cool. I'm liking that. Yeah, it's... I use this one some of the time. It's... You gotta find... You have to have the situation. Because part of it is that if the fatigues cannot be used or spent, um, I've always assumed I can't rest my units because I can't take the fatigues off. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. The other so, thing, too, you know... If you're not removing or spending them, they're just piling up too. So you're just, yeah, yeah. You know, you're using this early in the game. You might kick yourself in the butt in turns three, four, and five, something like that. Um, yeah. the The use of it that I've found to be the most beneficial is, um, yeah. I was just looking in the clarification. It okay. says so you cannot. You're not able to remove your fatigues with rest until the end of the turn. Uh, they're frozen. So, if you need a long strike unit, um, something something you want to maybe send those Suicide Squads to go get <laughs> is two or three moves away. Uh -huh. I'll play the like stones and I'll go flying, you know, three activations across the board or whatever. Basically loading up this one cruise missile of pain. Right to uh, get all the way there and then arrive in tip-top fighting condition. Yes. <laughs> Assumption is they're going to die anyways, so who cares how many fatigues they have at the end of the turn because they're probably dead. Uh-huh. So, yeah, send them over there. And, and it, it's, it, it has been successful. It's, it's sort of the thing is, is you catch people unaware that that's what's going to happen, so um, that's, that's part of the success to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. I think it definitely adds to their mobility. And I'm just thinking right now of the uh, scenarios with the baggage and stuff, trying to get them off the board. You know, yeah. In that scenario, more than any other, I think you're using fatigue to slow people down and stuff like that. So just being able to get the full, the full six inches uh, can mean the difference between victory and a, a draw or defeat. So cool. Yeah, many, many uses for that, I think, definitely handy um yeah just the end of end of the turn so you can actually pop this on the enemy turn as well orders a reaction Correct. do you ever do that uh less frequently i i get i maybe i maybe i've never done it i can't think of the <laughs> time yeah. where i have but i i suppose if you're planning well enough ahead and if you're going to have a bunch of fights and you're going to know you're going to have a bunch of fatigue units you could pop it and then you're protecting them pretty well. Yeah, I think it, it does kind of depend. You kind of have to plan for it in your turn where you're really just going to go all out and kind of get some units completely into the action and you're um, going to end the turn with you know two or three fatigues on a couple different units there. You know, instead of being vulnerable to the counterattack, uh, you can basically, you know, just pop this and make it a fair fight on the enemy turn, you know, somewhat. Yeah. So, okay, cool. I'm liking that. Mm -hmm. Other, so far, we're doing pretty good. I haven't seen any duds, but once again, we are talking 
too much saga. We're going to have to cut that one right there to keep this down to a reasonable video length. If you have any comments about what you've heard so far, please post below if you've heard anything that didn't sound right. <laughs> now, this is a pretty advanced board, so uh, hopefully we got everything correct. But if we didn't, please post below as well. Don't want anybody uh, picking up any bad info from us. And as always, like, favorite this shit. Check us out next week for part two of the Norse Scales. I'll catch you guys then. Sign up.